Well, good morning, Gladeview Church. My name is Pastor Lewis, and I serve here as the English pastor, and I am so happy to be with you guys here this morning. So glad that you decided to join us here uh, today. And today we're going to be reading from the book of 2 Corinthians. So I'm going to ask you to start turning there, and we're going to be looking at chapter 9. And really, this ties in to this big, this whole vision that we've had for the whole entire year. And that vision is to grow in our Christian walk. We want to grow in our faith. We want to grow in our trust. We want to grow in our Christian walk, in our spiritual walk. And today, we're going to be learning how to grow in the concept of sowing the seed of generosity. So we've looked at sowing the seed throughout these last couple of weeks. We saw how we need to sow the seed of the gospel. We saw how we need to sow the seed of doing good. And today, we're going to be looking at sowing the seed of generosity. So if you can, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We're going to be reading from verse 9. And it goes like this. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Verse 10. Now he who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for what you do for us, God. God, I thank you that you are teaching us to sow the seed of generosity. God, I ask you to help us to understand this passage as we read it. And I ask you to bless us and be with us here today. As in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. So if you're taking notes, the title of today's message is this, Sow the Seed of Generosity. And I don't know about you guys, but I've heard the phrase, it is better to give than to receive. And while I agree, many times it is, there's been times where I have thought to myself, that's not always true. You know, I, I, I like to receive things. I don't always like to give away my things. I do like, however, to receive things. I mean, who doesn't love their birthday when they get to receive gifts? Who doesn't love Christmas when you get to buy things for Black Friday sales and receive gifts as well? Or who doesn't love a nice little stimulus check in your bank account from the government? I mean, if we're true, if we're true to ourselves, we realize that we all like to receive things. And just as an example, if I were to ask you, would you rather give away $5,000 or receive $5,000? Which would you rather do? I'm sure most of us would rather receive $5,000. And I think that that's part of our nature. I think it's part of our selfish nature. We really look out for ourselves. We want to make sure that we are taken care of in every single way. We hoard riches and things for ourselves because we want more and more and more to ourselves. But the reality is that the Christian life is a life of generosity. See, we love and we we believe in a God who is a generous God. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from above, meaning that God gives us everything. God loves to give. And God's Spirit, who lives in us as Christians, urges us to be generous just like God is. So in this passage, Paul is writing to the church in, the, in, in Corinth to remind them of how generous God is and how we are called to be generous just like God is. As a matter of fact, the big idea for today is this. Christianity is a call to a life of generosity. 
We are called to be generous people. See, we follow Jesus, and Jesus loves us, and Jesus gave us freedoms. Jesus came to give us eternal life. Jesus came to give us everything. He came to give us eternal joy. And in that same way, we are called to be generous, just like Jesus was. I mean, he says this here in the passage specifically. In verse 6, he says this, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Now, what he's trying to give us here is an analogy of sowing and reaping. Now, we've been studying analogies like this throughout the whole entire year. And specifically what he's saying here is if you only sow a little bit, what you're going to get is only a little bit out of it. But if you sow a lot, if you are generous with your sowing, you sow a lot, right? What you're going to reap is you're also going to reap generously. It's a concept that we understand here of agriculture. If you plant only a little bit, you're going to get only a little bit. If you plant something a lot, you're going to get a lot of it. And specifically, what Paul is talking here, this seed that he's talking about, is our finances. He's talking about being generous with our finances. And he tells us here in verse 7, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not, uh, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So what he's trying to tell us this is, is this. Write this down as point number one. Your giving should be done generously. We should be giving back to God in a generous way. Now, you know, you might be wondering, well, how do we do that then? How do we give back to God in a generous way? Well, let's look at the ways that we don't do that. See, many of us sometimes find ourselves in an awkward position at church. See, maybe the offering plate is about to pass by and, you, you know, we're going to collect the offering. And you see everybody else giving, uh, putting something in the offering basket. And you feel kind of like, uh, you kind of feel forced, like you have to. You don't really want to, but you kind of feel forced. So you just give a little something and you put it in the plate. You don't want to look bad in front of everybody else, right? So you just give whatever you can. But that doesn't show a heart of generosity. That shows that you're just giving out of compulsion or it gives out of a necessity or reluctantly. Or maybe, talking about reluctantly, maybe your spouse wants to give back to God, but you don't really feel like you want to give back to God. And when you give, you, you don't want to fight with your wife, so you, you just give back to God. And you're like, oh, I don't really want to, but here's my money. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a little bit to God, you know, a little tiny bit of my amount, but I'm not going to do it willingly. I'm not going to do it reluctantly. Or maybe this is part of something that you do all the time. Maybe you give back to God every single week and it's something that you've always done. But for you, it's maybe just second nature and you just do it because it's something to do, not because you truly want to be generous with your finances. You do it because you don't want to get in trouble with God or you, you just don't want to get in trouble with your parents, but you really wouldn't want to give it if you didn't have to, but you give it just because you have to do it each and every week. But all those ways are giving back to God reluctantly or maybe because you're under compulsion. But God, what he's saying here is that God loves a cheerful giver, meaning God loves somebody who when they give back to God, they're saying, God, I would love you so much. I want you to use these resources for your glory. I want to bless somebody with these resources. And you're giving back to God. That is your goal. When you give like that, when you give cheerfully, that is a heart of generosity. Now, let's give an example here. Let's say that this over here is your personal home, like your needs, your finances, your the things you need to survive. And this over here is giving back to the church so that you can meet the needs of other people who are in need. And let's say 
that this here is the amount of finances you get each and every month. Now, when you look at this, you, you, you say, well, there's only a limited amount of finances in here. There's only a limited amount of seed in here. Once this runs out, I'm not going to have any more. So what do we do? Well, we say, okay, God, I mean, I need all of this. And I, I, I'm going to need to put some in savings. Some goes to the car. Some goes to the house. Some goes to here, the child's school and to that. And God, I mean, I, I'm going to need all of it. God, I, I, I don't know how I can be generous to you when I need to meet my own needs. I need to provide for myself, for my family. I need to make ends meet. God, how can I give to you and not knowing if I'm going to get any more? Well, I want you to write this down as point number two, because the Bible tells us specifically that God is going to provide for us. So I want you to write this down as point number two. Trust that God will provide. See, when we give back to God, it's not just the fact that we're giving money. What we're, when we're giving back to God, we are saying to God, God, we trust you. We trust you with our resources and we trust in your provision for us. We trust that you're not going to leave us alone and that you're always going to be there to provide for us, God. So that is what we say when we trust in God as we give. And, you know, this passage tells us something about God. It tells us that even though if we are giving generously, if we're if we're if we are gonna be giving generously to to the work of God, you know, we're providing for our own needs and but we're but we're still giving generously to the needs of others to the church. And even though we are we don't know where our next paycheck is gonna come from, we don't know if God's gonna provide, we don't know if we might lose our job. We don't know if, if there's going to be another increase or a bonus or whatever it might be. We, we just don't know, but we trust in a God that provides for us. And I want you to take a look at what it says here from verse 8 through 10. It says this, And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So what is he trying to say here? What he's trying to say here is that God is going to provide everything that you need so that you will continue to do good work. I want you to write that down as A. He will provide for your needs. God is going to provide for everything that you need need. God is not going to leave you alone. God is going to continue to provide for you. You are his child and he is going to bless and provide for you one way or the other. Whether it's providing for you by giving you the ability to work and to earn money or if you're not able to work by providing resources from somebody else to come alongside you and bless you and help you out in your time of need. But God is going to provide for you. God is not going to forget about you. God is our provider. But not only is he going to provide for us, look at what it says here in verse 10. It says, Now he who supplies the seed to the sower, he, so God is the one that provides the seed, right? And bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. What he's essentially saying here is that God is like this massive jar of seed. God is going to fill up your store. God is going to continue to provide for you. God is like this endless supply of resources because he's God. He owns everything and God is going to supply your needs for you. So God is going to fill you up. He's going to continue to give to you so that you can be meeting your needs. But that's not the only reason he gives us resources. That's not the only reason. The second thing, I want you to write this down as B, is he will provide for your generosity. 
Meaning this, not only is he going to provide enough for you to be okay, he's going to meet your needs. He's also going to provide enough for you to be generous with your resources to others. He is going to give you enough so that you can be generous. Look at what he says here in verse 11. He says, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous. That is why he's going to enrich you. Not so that you can hoard up all these riches for yourself. Not so that you can have a bigger house, a bigger car, a nicer whatever. God is not enriching you because of that. What he is doing is he is enriching you so that you can be generous. God is giving you more so that you can be more generous. You are being blessed so that you can be a blessing to other people. And that is what God is promising us here, that he is going to provide for us for our needs, and he's also going to provide for our generosity. Now, you, you look at this and you might say, okay, I get that. God is all powerful. All the riches belong to him. He's able to bless me. So then, in light of all this, Pastor Lewis, what should I do? How should I live my life in light of God being able to provide for myself and God being able to provide for my generosity? Well, write this down as your application. We need to live a life of generosity. Live a life of generosity. Now, you know, when we look at the Christian life, we said before that it's marked by our generosity. We need to give to God, trusting that he's going to provide for us. But how exactly does that work? How do we give back to God? How do we sow the seed of generosity? Well, write this down as one. We need to follow the biblical principles of giving. We need to follow the biblical principles of giving. So the Bible says a lot about giving. The Bible talks a lot about giving back to God, giving to others, caring for those in need. The Bible talks a lot about that. But specifically, when the Bible's talking about generosity and giving back to God, he does this in, the Bible does this in two different ways. Write this down as A. The first one is through your tithes. Through your tithes. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a tithe is, it's a biblical principle that we see in the Bible that is 10% of your income. Meaning, if I get $1,000 every single week, we give back to God $1,000, out of every thousand, we give back 100. So 10% of what you, what you get is what you give back to God. And how do we give it back? Well, we give it to our local church. So if you make Glade your local church, that is a church that you give it to. If you are part of a different church, that is the church that you are giving to. And as we look at the Bible, we see that this principle wasn't just about giving money back to God. It was essentially saying that we trust you, God, with our first and we trust you with our best. See, these people in these times were agricultural people, and the harvest didn't always yield uh, as much as they thought it would, you know, but they would give back to God their first and their best, their first 10%, knowing and trusting that God was going to bless them with the rest of the 90. It wasn't always for certain. I mean, it could have been a drought. It could have been a, a famine in the land. It could have been something crazy happening with the weather, and they weren't always sure if they were going to have a good crop, but they always trusted in God and gave to him first. So this is flipping it upside down, meaning instead of giving first to ourselves, no, no, no. What he's saying is first we give back to God and we trust that God is going to provide the rest, that he's going to take care of the rest. And Maybe you're wondering, well, why the church? Why should we give back to the church? Well, the church is how God chose to be a vehicle of blessings to others. I mean, specifically in this passage, Paul is saying, hear this in verse 11, 
It says, and through us, meaning himself and the church, he's representing the church, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. See, the church knows the needs of the community. By knowing the needs of the community, we are able to meet the needs of those who need it the most. Just to give you an example, in just these last few weeks, here at Glaveview, in our local church, we've been able to give not only locally to people in need, but also globally to people in need. See, a couple of weeks ago, we were able to give gift cards to, to supermarkets for those people who were in need. We were able to give over $2,500 in gift cards to the people in our congregation who were in need of food, who, needed, who had lost their job and needed some food to be able to get by. This last week that passed, we were able to meet together at our church and have a drive through where we were giving care packages to people in our church and people in the community who were in need. We were meeting the needs of the people who were there. And just in these last few days, we were able to bless some pastors in Merida, Mexico, where we support some pastors there who are going through a very difficult time. We were able to send over $2,000 to feed these pastors who are literally starving to death, who are in dire need of food. And we were able to give them financial resources so that we could help feed these pastors who are still doing the work of God. And just like this, there are so many other examples of how our church gives back to the community. We find the need because we are intimately intertwined with the people in our church and we're able to identify where the need is and through your giving, we're able to meet the need for those who need it the most. Church, this is one of the ways that we give back to God through our tithes. It's something that we are faithful with, that we continually give back to God because He is going to use these resources to bless those people who are in need. But that's not the only principle that we learn from God's Word. Not only is it the tithes, but we also see, write this down as B, the offering. And the offering is a little different from the tithes. See, the offering is something that is above and beyond the tithe. See, sometimes God has blessed us with so much that we want to give to people in need. Maybe that's a friend or family member who is struggling right now and you want to be a blessing to them. Maybe it's a child that's overseas that you sponsor that that would be above and beyond your tithe to the local church. Maybe it's an organization that you believe in and you want to give to. Those are offerings that are above and beyond. And even in our own church, we sometimes have uh, different things that we want to sponsor, things that are above and beyond the tithe as well. Maybe meeting any specific needs of any pastor that might come through or any specific needs in the country. I know that we were able to bless a child that was going through cancer treatments in Hawaii. And that is one of the things that we get behind church by giving our tithes and our offerings. And church, that is not the only way that we can help support. See, we do look at the tithes and we do look at the offerings, but that's not the only way that we can be generous with our lives because the passage tells us to be generous in all things, not just with our resources, not just with our finances, but also with everything that God has blessed us with. So maybe that's your home. Maybe your home, you want to open it up so that you can have people joining your home for small group. If God has blessed you with a home, why not use it for his glory? Maybe that's your car and you want to Give a ride to somebody who's in need and you want to be a blessing with that resource that God has given you. Maybe it's your time or your talents and you want to serve in the church where you can give back by being somebody who shares in your gifts and your talents and giving back to the community and giving back to the church. Maybe that's what you want to do. But remember that this is all above and beyond the tithe and the offering. That should be our first mission. You know, one of the things that I have realized is that it doesn't matter how much you have. Really, it's about the heart of generosity. And I have never experienced generosity like seeing how people live outside of our country. 
I've been able, I've been blessed to go to a couple of different countries on missions trips. And one of the things that I'm always amazed by is by the people who live there who have a lack of food, who have a lack of resources, who don't have as much, and yet they are generous with what they have. I remember going to Cuba and seeing people's homes who barely had anything. And you had people trying to make you coffee, trying to give you whatever they had because they lived a life of generosity. Church, it doesn't matter how much you make, whether it's a lot or a little bit. It's about the heart of generosity that we have. And if we want to see great results, if we want to see great reaping of your generosity, then we need to give generously. If you only want to see a little bit, if you have that scarcity mentality, if you don't truly believe that God is going to bless you, you're never going to see the fullness of what God wants to do in your life. Now, I understand that maybe many of us right now might be wanting to be generous. We might want to give back and we might want to, to, to give as much as we can. However, we find ourselves in a place where we have a lot of debt or we have a lot of financial issues and living paycheck to paycheck. And to be honest, you, you'd love to be able to give back 10% or an offering or whatever, but you just can't because you can't find your way out of this financial hole. Well, I, I want to give you some resources as well because you know this is something that has blessed me personally, me and my family, and many other people who have found themselves in debt and struggling financially. And that's Financial Peace University. We're going to be adding a link to, uh, to our site so that you can go there and you can actually register for one of those classes. They could teach you how to manage your finances appropriately, how to get out of debt. It's a great resource for those who are struggling financially. I'd love to, to share that resource with you guys. Well, church, I would just want to take a moment and inspire you. Because what would our church look like if every single one of us was meeting the needs of one another? If every single one of us was generous with our giving, with our tithes, with our offerings, sharing our resources in whatever way possible. If we lived a life of generosity, we could change our city. We could see a city that is changed for God because we are living a life of generosity. Whereas it's everybody else's nature to keep things to themselves, to hoard everything to themselves, it is our privilege to be generous because we have a God who has given it all for us. So therefore, we need to be people who live a life of generosity. Church, let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for this message. God, I thank you for this time that we got to spend together reading your word. God, I ask you to bless us, help us to have generous hearts and to be able to give what you have put in our hearts to give. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, church. Stay tuned for some announcements. What a great message we had today. And if by listening, you want to accept Christ in your heart, we want to know about it, so let us know so we can give you the next steps. And you can let us know by sending us a message on whatever platform you're watching this on. And as always, don't forget, you can click and subscribe on Instagram, on Facebook, or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. So we hope you enjoyed today's service, and we'll see you next week.